So while editing, and in fact, the night I completed the first edit of this video, I heard the news that the writer of the episode uh, that I'm about ready to cover, Jerry Taylor, um, passed away, sadly. Um, if you're familiar with Jerry Taylor, she is probably one of the most noteworthy writers from Next Generation Air. She wrote some fantastic episodes, including the one I cover in this video. In fact, the one I cover in this video, The Drumhead, is the episode she cites as being the most proud of. This is the, the Star Trek episode she views as her masterwork. So I hope that I really do it justice and would just like dedicate this video to her and her legacy. Here's a new idea for a series. Let's examine media and see what political points it's trying to make. I've made no secret that I'm a huge Star Trek nerd. And this franchise is thick with morals and political messaging. And for this new series, I thought it'd be good to go back in time and look at some episodes before the new batch, before many would say the series went woke, and see what this series has to say about the world we currently live in. With the presidential election around the corner, let's look at it through the lens of season four's The Drumhead, written by Jerry Taylor and directed by Jonathan Frakes. Originally aired April 27th, 1991, The Drumhead opens with Picard doing his captain's log to set up the episode, where we learn the Enterprise has a Klingon exobiologist on board who appears to be involved with a data breach and a sabotage of the ship's warp drive. Riker and Troy are questioning him, and he pulls the racism card. You accuse me because I am Klingon. To which Troy pulls the, my future ex-boyfriend is a Klingon card. Our chief of security is Klingon. That has nothing to do with it. Which is just as weak in the 24th century as it is now. But the show counts it for a win, so yay? It's actually kind of clever to have it here placed as almost an offhand remark. Because while it's never directly referenced again later in the episode, racism plays a massive undercurrent to this entire story. After the credits were introduced to Admiral Bitchface. I'm I'm sorry. I mean Seti. Played wonderfully by Gene Simmons. Seti is an admiral who has proven to have an uncanny ability to expose dangerous conspiracies that happen under many people's noses. Her first step is to check out the damage in engineering, where most of the evidence suggests the ship was sabotaged. However, Data and Geordi will continue their investigation until they have a clear conclusion. Later, Worf arrives in Picard's office and tells Picard and Seti that the Klingon, Jajan, was able to send data he recovered through a technobabble injection that literally encodes the DNA of the person with the information. They confront Jajan with this, and he defends the Romulans, who he has been sending the data to. Needless to say, when your argument goes from, I didn't do it, to, well, is it so bad that I did? It doesn't exactly support your innocence claim. He also says he has no knowledge of the sabotage to the engine and had nothing to do with it. Seti's Betazoid advisor, Sabin, indicates that he's telling the truth. Seti is quick to tell Picard that this shows someone else on the Enterprise is involved. Jajan was able to hide his technobabble DNA encoder thingy because he has required medical injections that would regularly come from the infirmary staff. Enter Simon Tarsus, who is questioned by Seti. He is mostly human with a Vulcan grandparent. He comes off very nervous when questioned, which makes sense considering he's being questioned for possibly being a co-conspirator. What is your relationship with the Klingon, Jadan? Um, he, I mean, there's no relationship. He just came in for his injections. Saban indicates he's lying. He is confident that Simon Tarsus is Jadan's accomplice. Picard is skeptical. Sati is also confident that Tarsus is at fault. But Sati and Picard are called to engineering. Data and Geordi have finished their analysis and found conclusively what happened to the engine was a combination of a slightly defective part at their last overhaul and a general wear of the system. There was no sabotage. It was an accident. Sati and Saban don't think this proves anything. There must still be an accomplice, and that person is almost certainly Simon Tarsus. While Picard's eager to move on from this, 
After all, they found a Klingon spy. The engines weren't actually sabotaged. What else happened? Seems like a good point to move on from. There's no evidence that Tijan had any accomplice. I mean, who are they even looking for at this point? Sati hosts a public interrogation of Tarsus with the new information she has discovered. This questioning is much more confrontational, with Saban saying that the chemical used to sabotage engineering is something found in sickbay where Tarsus works, and that Tarsus lied on his Starfleet application. See, Tarsus wanted to join Starfleet more than anything. All my life, I wanted to be in Starfleet. But he knew they would never let him join. Not with his Romulan grandparent. So he lied. He said he was a Vulcan. Star Trek lore has always firmly established Vulcans and Romulans are very similar in their genetic makeup. So he lied. And now he gets to live his dream and be a member of Starfleet. Except now, Satya has discovered this information and is using it to destroy his life. After all, how can we trust him? He is a dirty Romulan. They are the enemies of the Federation. They are who Jajan was sending the data to. Tarsus hid the fact that he was a Romulan. So that means he must be a spy. And just like that, Tarsus's life is ruined. Best case scenario, he's kicked out of Starfleet. Worst case, he's put on trial for treason and all that could result from that. Worf and Picard have a heated conversation that I wish I could play for you, but copyright bots would never allow it. But the road from legitimate suspicion to rampant paranoia is very much shorter than we think. Something is wrong here, Mr. Wolf. I don't like what we have become. Satie reveals that she has been in contact with Starfleet Command. She intends to make an example of Simon. Picard vows to fight this. This is when Satie orders Picard to be interrogated. And this moment is when the politics of the episode become unambiguously clear. The Enterprise deploys its most powerful weapon here. This is naturally the Picard speech. And I think it is very telling to play it against the rhetoric of one of our current presidential candidates. I'm deeply concerned about what is happening here. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. It began when we apprehended a spy, a man who admitted his guilt and who will answer for his crime. It's just this amorphous group of people, but they're smart and they're vicious, and we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy, becomes a sound of, oh, how can he say? No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And but the hunt didn't end there. Another man, Mr. Simon Tarsius, was brought to trial, and it was a trial. But this is who we're fighting. These are the people who are doing such harm to our country with their open border policies, record-setting inflation, Green News scam, and everything else that they're doing. No matter what others choose to call it, a trial based on insinuation and innuendo. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. Nothing substantive offered against Mr. Tarsus, much less proven. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Mr. Tarsus' grandfather is Romulan. Complaining to lawmakers in the Oval Office about protections for immigrants. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these shithole countries here? According to a Democratic aide familiar with the conversation, Mr. Trump was referring to African nations and Haiti. And for that reason, his career now stands in ruins. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. Think of that. Have we become so fearful? Have we become so cowardly? And even that enemy, too, when they're really the enemy, they're the enemy of the people, the press. That we must extinguish a man because he carries the blood of a current enemy? 
We have people coming into the country or trying to come in. We're stopping a lot of them. But we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. Admiral, let us not condemn Simon Tarsis or anyone else because of their bloodlines. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I don't know anything. Honestly, I don't know David Duke. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. Or investigate others for their innocent associations. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military. I implore you, do not continue with this proceeding. End it now. Throughout this scene, Picard's career is put on trial as Satie tries to make the case that Picard is a traitor. Worf, who has been supportive of Satie, even stands up and questions what she's doing here, that Picard's decisions in these moments were logical and something even he supported. But then Satie shuts down Worf, who has been one of her most vocal allies, for having a father who worked with the Romulans. Which, by the way, is a whole separate storyline that we're not going to dive into here. Maybe we'll get to it at an hour point, because there's definitely stuff going on there, too. Picard uses the words of Satie's father against her, sending her on an angry rant that causes the Starfleet Admiral who is overseeing this hearing to just stand up and walk out. That Admiral soon shuts down the entire investigation. Picard and Worf make amends, and Picard closes the episode out with a lesson that bears repeating. But she, or someone like her, will always be with us, waiting for the right climate in which to flourish, spreading fear in the name of righteousness. Seti is a character who Simmons plays brilliantly. She comes off as reasonable in the beginning. Her and Picard are very much allies, but as the investigation goes on, we see where these two differ, and her turn to villain comes across very naturally. The drumhead is an episode that isn't brought up nearly as often as it should. It is a fantastic episode of Star Trek, and one of the most relevant, now possibly more than it was originally aired. It was clearly inspired by the McCarthy communist hunting trials. To me, there's nothing fun about a man who could be the next president of the United States talking about the enemy within, making it clear that this was not a mistake. This is his go-to line, the enemy within, the enemy within, the enemy within. It's the enemy from within. The enemy from within. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in. Which he co-opted uh, from uh, Senator Joseph McCarthy, one of the worst people to ever grace our planet. But it can be used to talk about immigrants or trans people or gay people or black people or literally any of the groups demonized for something that they can't control. All that is rolled into Simon Tarsus, a kid just pursuing his dream, a dream that has come into jeopardy over something beyond his control. And that's why this episode is so important to revisit right now. In this presidential election, we have two choices. One who isn't perfect, one that has a policy on Israel that I firmly dislike, and then one whose whole campaign is about demonizing people like Simon Tarsus. It's him. He's the problem. We need to get rid of him. Our problems will be solved if we just get rid of him. What did he do? Well, he tried to make a better life for himself. And his pursuit of that in no way negatively impacted anyone else. But he's different. Therefore, he should be shunned. This election is between someone with some questionable policy choices and someone who just demonizes people just for easy points with his crowd. In other words, it's no choice at all. No one watches the drumhead and thinks Picard is wrong and Satie might have a point. 
And this election is just as clear cut. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.